Hey, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises to the Most High Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Waharuka Kwadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Most High God. Yahweh Shai is the true name of His only begotten Son, the one whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus, Yeshua, Jehovah, etc. The Raka Kwadash is the Holy Spirit that gives us the understanding of this truth. My double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone GMS who taught me this truth, which is the 100% truth. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect spread around the four corners of the earth. Shalom to the few aquats who are sincerely seeking this truth. It's the brother Yara Yaya Shar'ala from the GMS Italy camp. And I just wanted to do a lesson on the book of um, Jeremiah 24. And hopefully it's going to be edifying. So I'll start reading. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 24. Start from verse 1. The Lord Yahweh showed me. And behold, two baskets of figs were set before the temple of Yahweh. After that, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away captives, Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and the princes of Judah, with the carpenters and smith from Jerusalem, and had brought them to Babylon. So this is Jeremiah speaking. The Most High Yahweh Shem Shai showed him um, a vision of two baskets. Okay, then we'll see what the baskets looks like. And this period of time is speaking right here is when um, the Babylonians, you know, came to besiege Jerusalem. Now you can read the, the story of these kings in the second, I believe, second book of Kings, chapter 20, 25. Okay, you can start from chapter 24, but chapter 25 goes straight direct to, to, the, to the point. Anyway, verse 2, one of the baskets had very good figs, even like the figs that are first ripe, and the other basket had very naughty figs, which could not be eaten, they were so bad. Now, we're going to go and see what these figs actually represent, but I'll just tell you right straight away that these figs represent Israel. In entirely and you have the figs that are good to, to be eaten and the figs that are bad representing the house of David and the house of Saul in other words you can say the elect and the and the chosen one toward okay and the two thoughts that are wicked now let's keep reading Then said Yahweh unto me, What seest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, Figs, the good figs, very good, and the evil, very evil, that cannot be eaten, they are so evil. And that's exactly what, you know, the two thirds of Israel actually are before the Most High. They are, they are absolutely useless, you know, and they need to go through the destruction that is yet to come. In order to be purified and come back to their normal senses in the kingdom. Verse 4 Again, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Thus said Yahweh, the power of Yashar Allah, like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captives of Judah, whom I have sent out of. This place in the land of the Chaldeans for their good. So you can, as I said earlier, you can read, you can read um of this account in the in the second Kings chapter 24. Okay. So the Chaldeans, you know, they came and they took captives, you know, of the house of Judah. Now, let's get some quick precepts on this verse like to open another 
So right here we have um, the book of um, book of Hebrew, chapter twelve, verse six to seven. So we all know the reason why Israel went into captivity. Israel went into captivity because they disobeyed the commandments, the laws and statutes in which the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai has laid as a way of life. They refused it and they chose the way of death. Okay, so the Most High handed them down to the hands of their enemies, you know, and this was a chastening, um, chastening process, so to say. You know, it was a process of, you know, chastening us and making us become better people, you know. Because, you know, J Jacob is stiff-necked, you know, the sons of Israel are stiff-necked. They really need to go through a lot of, you know, chastisements in order for them to come to their normal senses. Just like today, we are under the siege of this um, wicked kingdom, the Edomites. We are under their rule, you know. We are actually at the low, low, the lowest estate in, in society. We are catching all hell because the Most High is chastening us. And all praises to the Most High, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. We are paying for the sins that we committed, you know. And in, in, in all these sufferings, the Most High is still opening our eyes. You know, he's waking those boom. He promised he was going to wake up. And we are getting this truth. We are seeing everything the way they are. And we are giving all praises to the Most High Yahweh Hashem Shai. We needed to go through this process in order to understand better how to become the better judges, in which we will become when Yahweh Shai returns. Now, this is the book of Hebrew, chapter twelve, verse six. I would read these two verses, which quotes: "For whom the Lord Yahweh Hashem Shai love it." He chasten it and scourge every son whom he receive it. If ye endure chastening, Yahweh dealeth with you as with his sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons, man. So we're going through this chastisement because the Most High Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai loves us, you know. We are humble. We take all hell that the Most High Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai brings to us, you know. We are not quick to run to Egypt in order to look for help. We are not quick in trusting, you know, the powers that be. We are trusting in Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. We don't go to Egypt for help. Like the rest of the two thirds are doing. Now let's keep going. Verse 6. It says, For I will set my eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to their land, and I will build them and not pull them down, and I will plant them and not pluck them up. And this is the promise. You know, this is the promise given to us by the Most High, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, through His Son, our Savior, Yahweh Shai. You know, we are going to inherit that land back, the land of Israel, which is occupied by bastards now. You know, there is a scriptures that tells you that um, bastards are going to occupy Ashdod, you know, which Ashdod is a city in Jerusalem. And just like in the book of um, is it Revelation, the first chapter, on um, the second chapter, it tells you, you know, um, people occupying that place right now, you know, they are of the synagogue of the Satan, you know. But that land is coming back to the, to those who are the real administrators who were promised that land, and that land was promised to the sons of Israel, Yashar Allah, you know, that's the land of our fathers. Now, let's get, as I read, verse 6, it says, For I will set my eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to, the, to this land, 
and I will build them and not pull them down and I will plant them and not pluck them. Now let's get a precept from the book of uh, Isaiah. Isaiah 31 and verse 5. This is the book of Isaiah 31 verse 5. It says, As birds flying, so would the Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahushai of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it and passing over, he will preserve it. Turn ye unto him from whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted. Can and you know, Yahushai is coming to deliver us from the hands of our of our oppressors, as I said. So that land will be given back to us, will be delivered, you know, and people will be astonished by the strangeness of our deliverance, you know, which we know as birds flying representing the, the chariots, you know, the Marakab, the chariots of the Most High Yahweh Shem Yahushai, in which the world ignorantly calls UFO. You know, those are the chariots of the Lord that will save us out of, you know, every mess that is about to come down here, man. Now, going back to already read verse 6 so verse 7 it says and i will give them an heart to know me that i am the lord yahweh and they shall be my people and i will be their power for they shall return unto me with their whole heart now this is speaking of the basket of the good figs you know so the most I hear about Shem as, as I read, I'll read again. It says, I will give them an heart to know me that I am the Lord and they shall be my people and I will be their power for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. As a matter of fact, you know, we are expecting to get new hearts, man. You know, because right now we have hearts of stones, which represents the, the, the tables, the tables of stone in which the commandments are written. But the most I is going to give us a heart of flesh, you know. In which you know is going to change our hearts these commandments will be written in our inward parts and we would not be able to, to sin anymore you know now let's get the book of um oh, hebrew 10 a bit from verse 16. No, excuse me. Khan. Hebrew ten sixteen. It says, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, said Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds. Will I write them? And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now, where remission of this is, there is no more offering of sin for sins, you know, because we would not be able to sin anymore. And this is just a plan, you know, that's why we're trying to reconcile with our power, Yahabash and Yahushai. You know, the Most High is going to change our hearts because these hearts right now, we are subjected to sin. You're subjected to everything, man. But we'll be given a perfect art that we will not be able to sin anymore. Now, and this is already starting to happen anyway because the Most High is already turning our hearts, you know, turning the hearts of the sons to the Father, you know. Through this truth, you know, we're being washed and our hearts are already turned, uh, is turned to the Father, you know. We look up to the Father, Talking of the good figs, you know, but the bad figs are not, they're not, they're not partaking of this prophecy now, you know. Then when we get into the kingdom, we'll be given new hearts, man. And how beautiful would it be, you know, for you not to be able to sin anymore, you know, for you to be immortal. Now, this is verse 8. 
And as the evil figs which cannot be eaten, they are so evil, surely does set the Lord, so will I give Zedekiah the king of Judah and his princes and the residue of Jerusalem that remain in this land and them that dwell in the land of Egypt. Now, remember I said you should go read, you know, this is the king of Zedekiah. He remained in Egypt, in, in he remained in um in Jerusalem during the siege. And there was a there was a time in which you know they, they started getting hungry. There was no longer food and they decided to escape. But they were all surrounded by the Chaldeans, you know, and they got taken down, man. You know? And it's really, really powerful in which you see this scripture right here it speaks that remain in this land. And them that dwell in the land of Egypt, which is the land of captivity. So we're still going to get there. But first, I want to read from the book of always Jeremiah, chapter before. Um, 21. 21, 8. So it says, And unto this people thou shalt say, Thus said the Lord Yahweh Shemiah Shai, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. He that abideth in this city shall lie down, shall die by the sword, and by the famine, and by the pestilence. But he that goeth out and falleth to the Chaldeans that beseech you, he shall live, and his life shall be unto him for a prey. You know? So the, the, this um, this Israelites they actually believed in the power of the walls of Jerusalem. They believed in their own power. They believed that no one could bring them down. You know, whereas the Most High already you know made these prophecies. They couldn't believe their eyes that you know the the, the, the um, Jerusalem would be brought down. You know, they couldn't believe their eyes that their kings would be taken away captives. You know. Their sons murdered, slaughtered before their eyes, you know. They couldn't believe. They believed in their hearts. Just like what's going on now, you know. These wicked two thirds, you know, they believe in their investments. They believe in their money. They believe in everything that they've invested in. They believe in their social status, status you know. They don't believe that this kingdom can come down. They don't believe that America, Babylon, the greats will be destroyed, they don't believe that all hell is about to break loose. They still trust in their own hands, in their wealth, you know. And this wealth cannot do you anything. They can't help you in the day of trouble. People are going to throw away their golds and silver in the day of trouble. Now, we know that amongst these Israelites, you know, two thirds are really devils, man. They are wicked. This is the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 5. Believe it. Verse 26. It says. Jeremiah 5.26. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait. As he that set at snares. They set a trap. They catch men. Okay. He says, as a cage is full of birds, so, as they are, so are their houses full of deceits. Therefore, they are become great and waxen rich. And these are the so-called, um, 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 what do you call them? The bullies, the gate watchers, man. We have lots of Israelites in high positions, you know. They've been kept there by Esau. They get all these riches, this fame and money, you know. But all they do is to ensnare you, you know, to encage you, lie, sell lies to you, deceive you, corrupt your children, corrupt your spirits, push out, you know, these wicked demonic vibes, you know, destroy you with negativity, man. And they are the real negative people. But when we come out speaking this truth, they try to put that negative stuff on us, you know, get the F out of here, man. So these two thirds of Israel needs to be destroyed because they are doing the bidding of the wicked. They seek their refuge under, under Egypt, which is the house of bondage. 
in which today you know the house the main house of bondage the capital of the houses of bondage bondage is america babylon the great that's where all madness starts from and they get down to the rest of the other kingdoms so these people they get in there there are few changes that they get from the elites you know they're being placed in different positions to blind the sons of israel from their true heritage you know now let's go back um we were in verse eight so it says and as the evil figs which cannot be eaten they are so evil you know as we read amongst our people are found wicked men you know that's jeremiah 5 26 surely thus said yahweh so i will give zedekiah the king of judah and his princes and the residue of jerusalem that remain in this land and them that dwell in the land of egypt you know woe unto them you know that go to the land of egypt for help because they say that egypt has lots of chariots and power woe unto those people who lean their trust you know in this system you know this beast system you know the the the, the, the powers that be you know look woe unto them that trust in all their lies woe unto them that trust in 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 um in their welfare programs and all these things that they've had they've had they have you know ready for you um what i mean is actually for well uh, you know the jews they are trying to you know get into your body woe unto those people that trust in those things man they will all be destroyed ecclesiasticus 12 10 says never trust thine enemy for as iron rusted so is their wickedness Now, going to verse 9. It says, And I will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth for their hearts, to be a reproach and a proverb, a taunt and a curse, in all places where I shall drive them. You know? And no matter how big you are in the society, as long as you're, you're, you're Hebrew Israelites, this this um these curses are going to follow you they come in different ways you know and don't think that all these celebrities the so-called so jake celebrities they're not catching hell and these jake celebrities are catching hell more hell that you can imagine you know and they have to do all sorts of abominations to get to those you know those um positions that they find themselves sacrifice people sacrifice themselves you know kill babies and drink blood now this is verse um verse 10 it says and i will send the sword the famine and the pestilence among them till they be consumed from off the land that i gave unto them and to their fathers can and this is the destruction that is coming to the to the to the two thirds, man, to the to the wicked and the two thirds. You know, you all be destroyed. You will be consumed, man. Destruction is coming. The most high is going to cut you off, man. This is the book of um, Zechariah. Zechariah 13, verse 8. It says, And it shall come to pass that in all the land set the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahushai, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire, and we will refine them. As silver is refined, and will try them as God is tried. They shall call on my name, and I would hear them. I will say, It's my people, and they shall say, The Lord Yahweh Shem Yahushai is my power. You know, and we are catching hell, man. The one told is catching hell. You know, it's not that you don't have men that are smart enough to make money in this society, but no, we're putting our trust in the most high Yahweh Shem Yahushai. You know. We don't really put our hearts on that money. 
we go out, you know, walk to be able to get some food on the table, to be able to live, you know. But we are not putting our hearts on making that so much money and trying to be successful, getting to a certain position or whatever, you know. And these jobs actually are going to become snares. This money, this money is going to become a snare to two thirds of the house of Israel. Many people are going to fall because of their riches. Many people are going to fall because of the things they don't, they can't live. You know, just like Yahweh Shai said to the rich, you know, and just like what he said about the rich, said it's easy for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into the kingdom of heaven. Your job is going to be a snare to many of you, man, because they don't want to give up that job, so they'll just go kill and get that Vicky Vax. Oops. You know? Get that 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 devil serum, you know, which is going to lead to the MOTB, you know? Because they can't give up that. That's where they trust in, you know? They don't trust in the most high Yahabah Shem Shai. They don't trust in miracles, you know? which in these days, you know, the one third, the 144, they are, actually, they are actually praying, you know, they are hoping for miracles to happen. In which we are praying, you know, that we are part of that number. So, anyway, having said this, you know, I hope this lesson was edifying. I'd like to give all praises to the Most High Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Ruka Kodash, my double honors, the apostles and elders of Great Mustone, JMS who taught me this truth. Shalom.